Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Danger Den Water Cooling Maze 3 setup. What is included in this package is a 120 millimeter fan. This fan gets attached to the Black Ice Extreme Radiator. They've also included a bay reservoir. This is where the water goes and you can install this into your five and a quarter inch drive bay. Included as well as a couple of water blocks. One for the CPU, this is the Maze 3. Has a nice solid copper bottom, a very smooth, so that's going to allow great contact between it and the CPU. The top here is a clear acrylic. This one here is the same thing except this one is for the chipset. Again, nice solid smooth copper bottom and this clear acrylic top. You have some water water. This is a solution that goes in the water that will prevent rust and corrosion and will help lower the temperatures as well. They've included some half inch clear tubing, some clamps for that tubing, as well as some Arctic Silver 3 and the high door L20 pump. And when setting up a water cooling system, first thing you're going to need to do is measure out the different lengths of tubing. And this is going to vary depending upon the size of your case and where you have the rad, the reservoir, and the pump located. And remember, with any water cooling system, it really doesn't matter where you start. As long as you complete a circuit with the water, it doesn't really matter. Now, in my particular case, I am going to start with the pump. Again, this is the High Door L20 185 gallon per hour pump. It also consumes around 11 watts of power. You plug this one into your AC outlet. It comes with a couple of fittings here. These fittings are for the tubes to be connected into the pump. And the base on this one is detachable. You can mount this to the inside of your case if you want to remove the pump or attach the pump. It makes it very simple to do that. Now there is some disassembly required with this. You need to take off this front piece first to attach the fitting to the intake. And once this part is removed, there's a part inside that you'll need to unscrew as well. Then go ahead and take this fitting and just screw it into place. Make sure it's all the way in. Then go ahead and place this back in. This just screws back into place again. Now once you've done that, you can then go ahead and screw in the fitting at the top. And the way the water flows in this is it comes in here and goes out at the top. With any water cooling setup, you want to test it outside the case. And that means making all the appropriate connections, testing it for 12 to 24 hours to make certain that there are absolutely no water leaks from it. Now, I just want to show you how the water is going to flow through this particular system. It's going to come out of the pump right here as cool water, then go into the water blocks. Now, of course, when it comes out of the water blocks and into the rad, it's going to be warm water. The radiator with the fan, cools down that warm water, comes out as cool water, then goes into the reservoir. Then it comes out of the reservoir and into the pump, and that cycle just continues over and over again. And of course, when you do install this in your system, you're going to mount these blocks to the motherboard and also attach all of these hose clamps to just make certain that all the tubes are firmly attached to their fittings. One thing that I do want to clarify here, with this Maze 3 CPU water block, the water actually comes into here and exits through here. If it's coming in through here, it's going to hinder performance on the water block. So when you go ahead and install this inside of your system, make sure that it's done that way. When installing the water blocks, it really is the same kind of installation procedure. I'm going to show you how to install one on the chipset. This is the block for the chipset and it gets installed pretty easily. You've got a couple of bolts here, some washers and some springs. I'm just going to show you how that works. First of all, these bolts go through the motherboard and on the back of here they will protrude through. Now once they're stuck through, you're going to need to put a plastic washer on like so and then a nut and do that same thing for the other side. So on the back you've got this bolt and you've got the plastic washer and the nut on either bolt here on the bottom and you pretty much do the same thing here on the top. You put this washer on first and then go ahead and screw these nuts down. 
And now that these bolts are nice and secure to the motherboard, then go ahead and supply some thermal compound to the chipset and then carefully just drop the water block right on top of there. Now the next thing you need to do is slip on some plastic washers on either side. Then go ahead with the springs and next these other thumb nuts just screw those down on either side. Now let me show you how quiet this system is when you have it turned on. But first, let me go ahead and show you how to fill this system up. First of all, do not turn on the pump until you have water into the reservoir right here. And you want to use distilled water and you also can use some water wetter if you wish. Now the first thing you need to do is remove this cap right here, insert your funnel and go ahead and pour the water in the top. And when you have filled the reservoir up full, go ahead then and turn the pump on. And you'll notice now that the pump is trying to even pull in more water. So just go ahead and carefully pour some additional water in so the pump can take in more water. And just go ahead and do this until the tank is completely full. And when the system is completely full of water and free of air bubbles, you're going to have one great functioning water cooling setup. Now, go ahead and have a listen to the pump. It's very quiet. One thing that would be much louder than the pump would be the 120 millimeter fan, but that really depends on what 120 millimeter fan you select. Danger Dan has always produced products that are very high quality, they are reliable, and they perform very well. This product is no different, it's definitely kick-ass. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and this has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon, I will have a brand new one for you then. Also pop in my website at www.3dgameman.com and while you're there you can go into the forums and register and remember registration is completely free. Until the next time, take care.